twenty o twenty fo. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, not the way I wanted to finish this book, but we're going to finish this book. We are going to finish this book. I guess this would be chapter 24 for us. The weight of the world. The weight of the world. Sean picked up the sleeve of his jacket, which was still wrapped around Megan, and wiped his eyes with it. He looked at Alex. It's up to you, man. You've got to fix this. Alex's throat ached. He couldn't fathom it. I I can't, he whispered. I don't know how. He never taught me all of that. Sean turned and faced Alex. He's told you a lot more than anyone else here, he said. You're the only one who can do it. Alex shook his head. No. You don't get it. It was just supposed to be for a few days. I can't even wrap my mind around this. He looked at Megan. We need to worry about her and Sam and Lanny. Simba. Mr. Today's dead. It's it's out because he's thinking Mr. Today's dead. Mr. Today's dead. Dead. And fine, everybody else. Oh, blast it! Sean's face turned to panic. Speaking of everybody else, I have to go. They're still out there, fighting. I have to get back and help. It was as though he just realized the entire world hadn't stopped when he found Alex and saw his sister. He struggled to his feet, still carrying her. Get up, he said to Alex an anxious tone in his voice. This isn't over, but you, you need to stay here and stay hidden. If you die, we have no chance at all. Here, take Megan. Alex scrambled up on weak legs and Sean placed his sister into Alex's arms. Go hide in the shack, bolt the door, try to find something to eat and get some rest. You look, wow. You look terrible. Alex watched, slack-chawed, and completely overwhelmed as Sean turned and ran, jumping over the creatures that littered the lawn. Carrying Megan, he picked his way carefully to the gray shack, struggling in the dark and unsure of his footing, exhausted from his ordeal. When he reached the shack, his arms were trembling. He pushed the door open and stumbled in, straining to see in the shadows. He'd never been in here before, not as a shack, only in its mansion form. He peered around the darkness and saw some furniture, furniture-like blobs. He staggered over and laid Megan on a couch, then caught the back of it with his hand to steady himself and stop the black spots that swam before his eyes. Like one of the paintings in Mr. Today's office, Mr. Today is dead, he thought once again. He's dead. The man who saved us all is dead. But it just wasn't registering. He sucked in a deep breath and let it out. He let it load, let it load. Then another, slower, until spout spots went away. He thought about what Sean said about eating something and realized that might really be part of his problem. He hadn't eaten a thing since lunch. And then he heard the creak of a door opening. Since lunch? Really? Since lunch? This all happened and he hasn't eaten since lunch? And then he heard the creak of a door opening. He whirled around and searched the dark room without success. Who's there? He said. I have a weapon and I will kill you. He sidestepped into a familiarly shaped kitchen, familiar to Quill Holmes. Not to the mansion, wondering how on earth there was no light here. And then he remembered how things used to be. He reached into the kitchen drawer and pulled out the required candles and flint. He lit one, only a little bit rusty at using the flint after not having to had to light a candle in well over a year. 
It flared up and the chicken grease soaked string stayed lit. Alex held it in front of him. Who's there? He said again. He walked toward the bedroom and pushed the door open. Inside, the light reflected on two sets of orange eyes. Ooh. Alex gasped. <gasps> Their beds had disappeared along with all the other lovely things from the mansion, though it was clear Mr. Today had had some kitchen goods and furniture in this shack for the purpose of the governor's visits. Now there was a, merely a small, single bed that looked quite precarious. The two huddled instead on the floor, looking terribly harmless. Was it really just earlier today that the girl had spit in his face? Sheesh! Sheesh! He said when he could breathe properly again. You scared me! I'd forgotten about you guys. I'm not gonna lie, I forgot about them too. Great writing. They must have something to do with the story. He took a few steps closer and got down on his hunches. What a what a time to wake up, little boy. Don't be scared, he said. I won't hurt you. I was, um, just lying about the weapon. He didn't know if they understood him. But don't tell anyone, he added. Get it? Eh? It was a terrible joke. He knew, and totally inappropriate. But he wasn't exactly thinking properly at the moment. The eyes moved, and as he leaned forward, he could see the outline of their bodies. Their neck bands glinted in the candlelight. The two drew back against the wall, so Alex stood again and backed up a few steps. Okay, guys, look, this is crazy. You don't trust me. I don't want to get spit on again. But I, I, I want you to know that I don't plan to hurt you. Not not ever. Oh, and you can leave anytime you want. Your raft is probably outside somewhere. He scratched his head. How about this? I'll stay over here in the living room with Megan, he said. And you two just do whatever you want. You're really the least of my worries right now. Alex fought off a violent yawn. Though it would be really nice if you'd tell me what's up with the Thorneman. He laughed a little at coining the phrase and realizing he was growing delirious with exhaustion. Just don't uh, kill me, all right? I'm sort of valuable right now, it seems. He looked at the door, remembering Sean's suggestion to lock it. Sighing deeply, <sighs> he pulled a rickety chair to the door and wedged it under the knob, securing them in for the night. Then he rummaged through the kitchen cabinets for water and brought some over to Megan, trying to ruse her, but unable to do so. He dripped a bit into her mouth to moisten it, drank some himself, and left the rest on the counter for the silence. Then he collapsed in a sofish, softish chair nearby, too tired to scrounge around for something to eat, and fell asleep. When he awoke, it was a bright new day, but everything came flooding back too fast. I hate that feeling. You know when something bad happens and you go to sleep and you wake up and then you realize, oh, yeah. Megan was still unconscious. Sam and Lanny were still missing. Simber was still at the bottom of the ocean. And Mr. Today was still dead. Alex sat up disheveled. That's like messy hair and everything. You guys probably look disheveled right now while you're reading this. He looked at his best friend who hadn't moved and felt completely lost without his other friends. He wandered all around the little gray shack, looking at the meager, colorless furnishings, and focusing his gaze out the window at the bodies strewn about. His eyes landed on the footpath, where Jim the winged tortoise had fallen, probably just like Simber, without warning. Alex leaned against a window, buried his face in his hands, and realized two things. There was no cure for this pain. And his life would never be the same again.